In this episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast, Carla Rodriguez and Marty Malloy McCoy discuss lifestyle medicine. What is lifestyle medicine? Lifestyle medicine is a discipline. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which is a not-for-profit organization, defines lifestyle medicine as the use of a whole food, plant-predominant, dietary lifestyle, regular physical activity, restorative sleep, stress management, avoidance of risky substances, and positive social connection as a primary therapeutic modality for treatment and reversal of chronic disease. Just type up the term lifestyle medicine and it will populate many findings such as organizations, published articles, blogs about the term. The first textbook on this subject was published in 1999 and the certifying board, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, convened its first meeting in 2004. Many of the leading causes of death are due to non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, cancer, lung disease stroke, Alzheimer's, and let's not forget diabetes. What is its mission, types of services, and outreach? The mission is to provide opportunities for healthcare professionals, such as medical doctors, nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, registered dietitians, pharmacists, exercise physiologists, to collaborate and share the message of the ability to reverse chronic health conditions that people are experiencing currently. Their workshops are available, networking with other healthcare professionals, access to webinars are available with these non-for-profit organizations, whichever one you do subscribe to, because there are many that offer lifestyle medicine resources. There are many webinars, again, free, and then also the opportunity for continuing education credit. There are also conferences, scholarships available, interest groups. I myself received a stipend to invite nurses, nursing students, and other healthcare disciplines such as nursing, registered dietitians, to attend a presentation in 2019 about lifestyle medicine. And I received a stipend from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine because I applied for it, and we served plant-based meal, such as lunch. But with regards to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which I happen to be a part of, but again, there are many types of lifestyle medicine organizations. We connect with other nurses, advanced practice nurses across the U.S., and we work on topics, presentations, different specialties on how lifestyle medicines apply to their practice. I am also a member of the HEAL Initiative, which stands for Health equity achieved through lifestyle medicine, which addresses health disparities such as food systems on a national and local level. To me, lifestyle medicine is about helping patients achieve optimal health and helping them prevent, treat, and reverse chronic diseases. Around 85% of chronic disease is a direct result of diet and lifestyle and therefore are modifiable. It's actually a pretty empowering thing to know that we have so much control over our health and lives and that only 15% of disease is related to genetics or is random circumstance. How did you hear about lifestyle medicine? In 2017, I attended a plant-based conference in upstate New York called Plant Stock instead of Woodstock. It was called Plant Stock. There were many speakers, including Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. I ended up asking him to do a presentation for us at the Myers College of Nursing, and he presented to nursing students, nursing faculty in February of 2018, along with Dr. McMackin, who runs a clinic in Bellevue using the principles of lifestyle medicine. I also heard about lifestyle medicine from Susan Benegas, who presented actually at that conference, that same conference about lifestyle medicine. And she, who happens to be the executive director for the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, and the founder of the Plantrician Project, which is also a not-for-profit organization. I am actually dual certified as an advanced practice registered nurse in both anesthesia and family practice. Four months before graduating CRNA school, my husband and I watched the documentary Forks Over Knives, which examines the way that diet affects health and how eating a whole food, plant-based diet can not only prevent, but also treat and reverse many chronic diseases. Afterward, I thought to myself, how can I tell my patients to live their happiest, healthiest life when I now know that I'm not? And so I immediately adopted a whole food, 
plant-based diet and started researching more information on how diet affects health and never really stopped because I'm still learning more each and every day. Because I'm so passionate about the interplay between diet, lifestyle factors, and health, I decided to get a postmaster certificate to also be a family nurse practitioner so I could provide lifestyle care services to patients. Don't get me wrong, I love doing anesthesia. I am more than happy to provide anesthesia to a patient who needs a toe amputation due to diabetes complications, but it would make me even happier to work with that patient and help them reverse their diabetes and never need the amputation in the first place. I opened up my own independently owned and ran lifestyle clinic in January 2021, which is going exceptionally well. And just to clarify a little more about what whole food plant-based means, it means eating a diet that is made with whole plants, minimally processed, avoids animal products, including meat, dairy, and eggs, and also avoids oil. Why is this discipline important for nurses? I became certified in lifestyle medicine by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine in 2020. It is also tiered by profession, which means medical doctors are given a different exam, advanced practice nurses or advanced practice professionals are also given a different exam, and then there's an exam for baccalaureate prepared professionals, such as registered dietitians and baccalaureate nurses. It is a cogent exam. Uh, it involves a textbook. It involves many uh, tutorials, and it is a certification exam, but it, uh, it leads the way for becoming credentialed and a content expert in the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Nurses serve an integral role of health promotion and wellness. And we are important stakeholders in healthcare. With 4 million in number, nurses are in a prime position to spread the message about adopting healthy lifestyle practices. Yet, many do not do to work and lifestyle and life issues, especially self-care. The American Nurses Association launched the Healthy Nurse, Healthy Nation initiative, which was released in 2017. And it addresses five domains. Which, is, which are nutrition, physical activity, quality of life, rest, and safety. The message is not only sent or spread out for nurses, but also nursing students, universities, and healthcare organizations. By the way, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine is a supporter of the ANA initiative. Nurses work in hospitals and in clinics or in many healthcare settings. It is important to know what patients are being prescribed as they leave or are being discharged to the community. While in the hospital, however, it is important to note also what they're being served in the hospital if the patient is inpatient and uh, stays for a period of time. The types of food that are being presented or given to patients are also very important to note. In New York, we have a bill that was just passed in December of 2020 where hospitals are now mandated to provide plant-based options for every meal for our patients. The foundation of lifestyle medicine really is the nursing model at its core. It is taking a holistic approach toward the care of a patient, looking at their diet, physical activity, sleep health, risky substance use, emotional wellness, and social connectedness, and how all of those factors affect their overall health. And then helping the patient modify their diet and lifestyle factors to positively impact and promote their health. A lot of medical care and services are really disease care, but lifestyle medicine truly is health care. It lends itself to the way nurses are trained to provide care. And since nursing is one of the largest and most trusted healthcare professions, lifestyle nurses are in a unique position to really shape the future of health care. And as Carla just mentioned, nurses also need this type of health promotion, just like everyone else. Healthcare providers who implement healthy practices into their own lives are much more likely to recommend healthy lifestyle practices to their patients than those who do not. What tools are provided for healthcare professionals? Tools such as interest groups, becoming healthcare coaches, webinars, conferences, the ability to network with other healthcare professionals is really very important in terms of collaborating with medical doctors and just the interdisciplinary team in order for positive outcomes for the patient. There are opportunities for continuing education credits, 
and to build up your credentials with lifestyle medicine. The most impactful tool that lifestyle medicine provides to me is the ability to reverse heart disease. In the United States and most westernized populations, heart disease is the number one thing that is most likely to kill you and everyone that you love. However, that does not have to be your future. A whole food plant-based diet, meaning a diet that focuses on whole plant foods, avoids animal products, oil, and highly processed foods, is the only intervention, dietary or otherwise, that has ever been shown to reverse heart disease. How can we share the message? So myself and Marty are part of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine member interest group, which involves RNs and advanced practice nurses. And we have been sending requests to our state nursing chapters about publishing an article from Joanne Evans. And the article is titled, Will Your Next Prescription Be for the Pharmacy or the Pharmacy? With the PH or with the, the letter S for pharmacy. And this, I sent out a request to the New York State chapter and still awaiting for their response. But it, this article addresses how many people are on prescription medications and how adopting a healthy lifestyle can prevent one from being on medications, not to mention side effects. I've also proposed a course elective at my university for the fall. Uh, it's titled Lifestyle Approaches and Wellbeing in Nursing, and it will address the six pillars of lifestyle medicine to the undergraduate nursing division. Students will learn about this lifestyle and in turn most likely counsel their patients about adopting this lifestyle. Also, Dr. Gia Merlot is a medical doctor and she's also certified in lifestyle medicine. She teaches this course to the graduate division and has taught also this course in this specialty, this discipline at Rice University. I think that if any of this piques your interest, one of the best things that you can do is watch a documentary devoted to the way that a vegan whole food plant-based diet can improve your health. I mentioned that Forks Over Knives is what I watched. It is actually just celebrating its 10-year anniversary, and I believe it's free for everybody to watch. There's Plant Pure Nation, which is the sister movie to Forks Over Knives, which I can also definitively say is always free to watch on YouTube. And then the documentary, which is most likely well-known, is What the Health, which is a pretty funny take on everything presented in a very nice, educational, but entertaining way, is available on several streaming apps. You can go to lifestylemedicine.org uh, to learn more about the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And um, just as an added bonus, I sent in multiple things to be put in the show notes that include things about these documentaries, about Joanne Evans's um, pharmacy or pharmacy article, and a few educational things in case you are interested in learning more. How does practice as a lifestyle nurse practitioner differ from the practice as a more traditional nurse practitioner? I spend a lot more time with my patients. And most of that time is spent doing patient education and counseling on lifestyle modifications and plant-based nutrition. And because we are addressing the root cause of disease rather than just the symptoms, I'm able to help a lot of my patients reverse their chronic diseases and get off of their medications. For example, type 2 diabetes. I start out by talking with my patients about the true pathophysiology of diabetes, which many lay people and healthcare providers alike are unfamiliar with. Type 2 diabetes is a disease of insulin resistance, and most people understand that. But then when I ask them what causes insulin resistance, that's when very few people are able to give me the correct answer, which is intramyocellular lipid deposition. That's a fancy way to say that there are fat deposits in your muscles. The number one thing that uses glucose in your body is your brain, but the runner up to the brain and glucose utilization is actually your skeletal muscles. And not just when you're exercising vigorously, your muscles still require a large amount of energy just for everyday tasks and functions. I want you to imagine that there was a door with a keyhole in between the glucose in your blood and the muscle cell. Insulin is the key that opens the door and allows glucose to enter the muscle cell, effectively lowering serum blood glucose as it moves from the intravascular space to the intracellular space. But when you have fat infiltrating the muscle cell, it's like there is a piece of gum in the gee hole, preventing the key from being able to unlock the door. When this is the case, 
the glucose is unable to move from the intravascular space into the cell, and therefore serum blood glucose levels do not lower, but increase. So in order to reverse diabetes, rather than just treat it, you have to remove the intramyocellular lipid deposits. The best way to do this is actually with lifestyle modifications and eating a whole food, plant-based diet that is filled with fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, etc. I know that that sounds a little antithetical to the typical low-carb diet that is typically recommended. It's beyond the scope of this podcast for me to really go through why a plant-based, carbohydrate-heavy diet is actually really great for diabetes treatment and reversal. I could literally talk about that for hours. So I'm just going to briefly summarize. There are several studies that compare the American Diabetes Association's diet, which is low-carb, against a whole-food plant-based diet that is not low-carb by any means, and the whole-food plant-based diet is more effective than the American Diabetes Association's diet in every study I've ever seen done on the subject. Also, let's say that you have diabetes and you're on a low-carb diet, and you are very strict, and because you're so strict, your blood glucose levels are awesome. Your doctor is happy and high-fiving you because the numbers are so good. But remember, diabetes is a disease of insulin resistance. If you ate a banana, your blood glucose would shoot way up because you're still insulin resistant. The low-carb diet is masking the symptom of diabetes, which is increased blood glucose, but you still have diabetes because you still have intramyocellular lipid deposits. If any of this sounds interesting to anyone, I highly recommend that you read the book, Mastering Diabetes, by Cyrus Kambata and Robbie Barbaro. They both have type 1 diabetes, eat an incredible amount of carbs, and have amazing glucose control with minimal insulin requirements. And most importantly, they are incredible and explain all of what I've been alluding to in a great, easily digestible way. As a real-life example, I have a patient who came to me on several diabetes medications and insulin with fasting blood glucoses of 240 to 260. My recommendations to him were to eat a whole food plant-based diet in general and to add in a few foods that are shown to help with blood glucose control, like millet, which is a whole grain, beans, blueberries, dried Indian gooseberry powder, and flax seeds. Those are all plant foods and carb heavy. In less than a week, his fasting blood glucose dropped from 240 or 260 all the way down to 140 to 150. Now, of course, that's just a case study, but the science is there and it has been for decades, yet not many people know about it. I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, but it is worth saying again, please check out Mastering Diabetes. It will help nurse practitioners have such a better understanding of a disease that they commonly treat. So in conclusion, lifestyle medicine is kind of like the ultimate expression of practicing in the nursing model. What does it look like to teach lifestyle medicine in a nursing curriculum? So I've been incorporating some concepts about lifestyle medicine when I teach uh, to the undergraduate division of nursing and when it comes to topics about diabetes, heart disease, uh, we speak about all these leading causes of death. And uh, a lot of the origins or with regards to etiology is unknown, but a lot also has to do with lifestyle and deep and diet and physical activity. So I definitely incorporate the concepts of lifestyle medicine and speak to it more in depth because immediately types of interventions nurses carry would be administer prescribed medication along with other things, of course, but medications are always there monitoring the patient, observing the patient, but then what happens to the patient afterwards? The patient gets lost. So we want to follow up with the patient. It's easier said than done, but it does involve a concentrated effort. And also just for nurses to serve as role models. If a medical professional was counseling a patient about the cessation of smoking, yet the medical provider smokes him or herself, then why would the patient heed their advice? So same applies for nursing, to at least apply these lifestyles to the best of our ability when we speak about these topics. This podcast does not constitute medical advice and should not be taken as such, and does not replace professional judgment or advice. The ideas and viewpoints expressed in this podcast do not reflect the official position of the speakers, authors, 
affiliated organizations, the Nurse Practitioner Journal, or Walters Kluwer.